What's up guys, I'm Maths here and today we've got a bonus video on iteration. This did fall under a previous topic but we didn't really have any iteration questions and at the time I thought let's focus on um, other accuracy questions and let's do iteration as a separate video at the end and here we are. Um, so iteration, there's there's um, two types of question on iteration, you'll see this um, in today's video. You can use iteration to um, estimate the answer to um, say a cubic um, and you can use it for quadratic, you can use it for a whole host of things um, or you can use it to generate a sequence. It's kind of the same thing but the two questions you'll see are very different um, in your approach to them. So here we've got an OCR one which is uh, really focused on the sequences so we're not using the iterative formulas to um, find a solution. Um, so we're given this kind of weird thing here and we're told what it equals. What this thing is, is the next term in the sequence. U and then the kind of subscript n plus 1 just means the next one in the sequence. And U with the subscript n is the current one in the sequence. So to get the next one, you've got to times the current one by 2, add 15 to it and then square root it. And that will give you the next one in the sequence. And that's all this um, formula is. So if the first one in the sequence is 5, which is what that's telling you, then find the second one in the sequence. So to find the second one, which is this n plus 1, okay, and we're just going to uh, do u2, we're going to get the first one in the sequence and times it by 2, then add 15 to it. So that would be uh, 10 plus 15, which is root 25. And then we can use a calculator if we want, or we can just know that the square root of 25 is obviously 5. OK, uh, it says another sequence here, and this is a much harder question, um, involves um, getting the previous term, times it by k, and adding r. So we've obviously got to find out what k and r are. So what we're going to do is we're going to find 206. So we're going to get 206 by timesing the previous term, which is 41, by k. So it'd be 41k, and then adding r. Then we're going to find this one here. So 1031 is k times the previous term. This time the 206 is the previous term. So we're going to times that by k and then plus r. Now you should see here that we've got um, lovely simultaneous equations but they both have the r in so all we need to do uh, is take away going downwards. So we're just going to take all of these away. Now it will be more helpful for me to do it the other way around so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that if I can hopefully I can drag that below here just to keep the numbers positive but I'm just going to subtract going downwards okay so we've got uh, 1031 take away 206 is 825 then we've got 206 take away 41, which is 165. OK. Get our lines in. And divide both sides by 165 to get what K is. So 825 divided by 165 is 5. And normally when you get an answer that's a nice whole number, you, you're pretty confident you've got it right. In some, the answers don't have to be whole numbers, but just the coincidence of it makes you feel like you've got it right. OK, then we're going to put the k into one of these. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm just going to pick the first one. And so we're going to find out what r is. So let's just do the calculation there. So 206 times 5 is 1030 and then take away the 1030 from both sides and obviously we've got one 
So r equals 1. Now, as always with simultaneous equations, you could put that into the second formula, the 206 equals 41k plus r, and you actually get 206 when you do 41 times 5 plus 1. Next up is our EQA question, and it's always pays to be really organised with this type of question where you're finding out uh, multiple terms. Um, so I always start off with the first term we're given, and then to find the second term, um, I could show the working out for this, but I'm going to do it all on my calculator, so I would probably recommend you show the working out, but I'm just going to type in brackets minus 1, which is the previous term, this is the x subscript n, uh, cubed minus 2, and all of that is in a bracket, I mean a fraction, um, and so it's over 10, and it gives me uh, minus 0.3, and then to find out x3, I'm just going to put that minus 0.3 in the same thing, in fact what I'm going to do is just use my calculator to go back and just change that minus 1 into minus 0.3 press equals and do minus uh, 0.2027 now we need to talk about strategy with this and I'm going to show you a much better way of doing this question and therefore question 22b so what you're going to do is you're going to type in minus 1 in your calculator, that's all you type in, then press equals. What that will do is that will store minus 1 as an answer on the calculator. Then what you're going to do is press the fraction button, and you're going to put in brackets, answer, and then close the brackets, and then cubed, and then take away 2, over 10. So what your calculator should look like is bracket answer, or ANS, close bracket, cubed, take away 2, over 10, all of that over 10. Now what you um, now do is you press an equals, and for every equals you press will give you the next term in the sequence. Okay, And this is the iterative function on your calculator. It's the calculator doing all the hard work for you. So when I press equals once, I get minus 3 over 10, or uh, minus 0 0.3. When I press equals again, I get uh, not, uh, minus 0 0.2027 which is what I got before but if you have a look at question B it says work it out to five decimal places so what I'm going to do is just keep pressing equals and I'm going to keep pressing equals until I get to a point where the first five decimal places have remained the same and the numbers changing are the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth decimal place and if you're not sure, just keep pressing equals, like do it t 10, 20 times, and you'll just keep getting the same answer. Now, you're not actually getting the same answer, it's just the calculator can't show you the, the level of accuracy um, to be able to see um, the uh, changes in the numbers. So if you had a calculator that shows 100 decimal places, even after 10 clicks of the equals, you, you might still see some changes. So mine has been static now on minus 0 0.20089765. So it wants it to two decimal places. Well, let's write down uh, what I've got on my calculator. And this isn't a bad thing to do. Never write it as an answer, though, because we are told we have to have it to five decimal places. So the five decimal places were cut off here. And so we've got to do some rounding here that zero is going to turn into a one and it's a minus don't forget now the exam is clearly wanting to use the you to use the iterative uh, function in your calculator how do I know this because it's one mark if they wanted you to work out x4 x5 x6 all of the ones in between then it wouldn't be worth a mark it'd be worth two or three marks um, and you can see here like when they ask you to work out x2 and x3 it was two marks um, and yet when you've got to find an answer, which you're going to have to press that equals, to, um, equals button a few times, it's only one mark. So that's why it's one mark. Last up is our Edexcel question. Uh, and this is more of the second type of iteration question. Nothing to do with sequences. It's all about finding solutions. Uh, and this is quite a nice question because it's kind of step by step by step. 
So um, for this first one, we've got to find that that um, function has a solution between 0 and 1. What is the solution? Well, if you plotted the function, um, a solution's where it crosses the um, y-axis. So we're expecting y to be um, negative one side and positive the other, or positive one side and negative the other. But it has to have a solution between 0 and 1. And that's not quite right. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, what that function is when x is 0. Okay, and hopefully it will be either positive or negative. Well, it definitely will be. Okay, so uh, 0, actually I can just type in minus 5, because it would obviously be minus 5. No need for another line of working out there. Okay, find out where it is for 1. I don't know why I've written my f's like that. Um... Probably, I don't know. That looks nicer. Less of a curl. Right. So substitute 1 into that. So it would be 1 plus 7, which would be 8. Take away 5, which would be 3. So that is positive, and the previous one was negative. So it must have a root between those. Right. We pay to spell out the uh, marker. So um, the sign has changed so there must be a root between um, x equals 0 and x equals 1 so just specify that that's where you, why you've come to the decision um, okay this next one's just a rearranging one and this is actually really typical for um, the iterative um, formula is you'll be um, sometimes uh, you'll have to come up with it um, yourself but it will specify what it is which it does here um, and you just need to um, oh I'm, I'm written down the wrong one Arg. Uh, and you just need to show how how they've got there so you won't I don't think you'll ever have to come up with it yourself but you'll have to show how they came up with it if that makes sense okay so quite a lot to do here so we know what we're aiming for we're aiming for one of the X's to be on the left and then um, the X squared to be at the bottom so the obvious first thing to do with this is add 5 both sides because uh, we've got that 5 at the top of the fraction so let's add 5 both sides and so we're going to have uh, x cubed plus 7x equals 5. Next thing I'll do is factorise the left-hand side because we know we've got to split up the x and the x squared. So I'm just going to factorise it. Then I'm going to... Hmm, do I want to... Maybe that's not the best way of doing it. Yeah, no, I think that's good. No, that works. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is divide by x squared plus 7. Kind of had a mental block there, but that happens. <laughs> so we've got x equals 5 over x squared plus 7. And that's the formula that, or the equation that we're asked to get. That is actually the iterative formula that we're using. So if you look, x has been replaced by x uh, subscript n plus 1. And the x squared is the current term, the x uh, subscript n. And we're going to use that to find an estimate for the solution of x cubed plus 7x minus 5 equals 0. Now, um, cubics are really interesting because there's, really, uh, there's not really a cubic formula like there's a quadratic formula. Um, so the iter iterative approach is one that um, is, is heavily used to estimate solutions. Um, it is an estimate because remember when we did the previous question and w what we're going to do with this one, where you keep pressing the equals button, it, it just gets you closer to the answer, but it never gets you the answer. Unlike the quadratic formula, that we only have to r we have to round it, but it is an exact. When we do it as a third, it is an exact answer. Okay, so we know that we're going to put the previous term here, and that will get us the next term. But we also know the much better approach of this. So x0 is 1. 
to find x1 what we're going to do is we're going to just press 1 on our calculator then equals then we're going to do the fraction button 5 over answer squared plus 7 okay and then we're just going to press equals and it gives it as a fraction but I'm just going to write down each one along the way now always check the marks it's three marks so we know that we're going to have to show some working out along the way um, so and it says it wants it three times so chances are um, that we're going to have to show each step I'm going to press equals again and I get 0 0.67 six five three two blah 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 press equals again and we get naught point six seven zero four four eight three blah 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 okay so our approximate solution is naught point six seven uh, because the six and the seven have remained consistent probably on the mark scheme it will give four decimal places goodness knows why um, but as long as you use that that third one because it asks us to do it three times to estimate the solution so it's roughly um, going to be uh, x equals that there is a part d that says um, go back to the original equation and um, use your estimate to or comment on the accuracy of your estimate so for this question all we're going to do is type in uh, 0.6704 cubed plus 7 times 0 0.6704 then take away 5 and so this will be part D and press equals and you get uh, what is it minus x equals uh, no you don't not x equals you get um, m minus 0 0.0045 Four nine blah blah blah, and so the common you will do is um, this is close to zero, so is accurate. And there we go. So quite a, a lengthy topic and quite quite difficult one only because it's quite dissimilar to the previous stuff you've done um, but you can see that it's it's uh, it used to be similar to a topic we used to do called um, trial and improvement uh, which is just about uh, t taking a guess and then improving that guess and improving that guess trial and improvement is no longer on the, the GCSE um, paper um, and this is a much more mathematical approach because this is mathematically guaranteed to get you closer and closer to an answer uh, for convergence sequences anyway. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you found it useful, please click like. Uh, if you want to see more from us, just click that subscribe button and the bell icon. And anytime we release videos, we're constantly, as you know, releasing videos, uh, you'll be notified. It's probably more important now than ever because we are going to take a little bit of a break because uh, we've been releasing videos I think for the last couple of months um, every single weekday so we're going to take a bit of a break but I do want you to uh, keep your comments coming in about ideas of um, stuff you want us to cover um, to do with the maths exam but it can be anything to do with the exam whether it's strategies or tips, advice, um, anything about the exam boards anything you want, write in a comment in one of the videos um, and I'll add it to the list for when we start making videos again. If you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, check out our website on maps.com. There'll be a magic link appear at the top of this video now. Just click it, it will take you straight through there. Completely free maths resources, um, and you can sign up for the summer school. Uh, and we're going to keep the summer school going, so you'll have the summer school um, reset today if you're watching this video when I release it. Um, so we're going to loop back through the topics that we've previously done so if you've missed any or you weren't very happy with the first time you did a topic then we are going to be looping through these topics again otherwise thank you very much and i'll see you next time